Wind matters. Oh, hello there. I'm Dr. Parkinson, and today we're going to be talking about offshore wind farms. The goal of the project is to have the smallest impact on the environment as possible, as to avoid rendering the project counterproductive in its green approach. Offshore wind farm development was halted in Ontario back in 2006 due to the fact that there was inadequate research on aquatic bird, bat, and butterfly species. Unfortunately, the lakes on the Burley Hill plot have been studied far less than the Great Lakes, and they are far more isolated, which makes analysis of the property much more difficult and costly. It takes approximately two to three years to gather enough research to understand the characteristics of the wind in a region that includes direction, strength, etc, etc. When it comes to building the offshore wind farms, one must abide by the Planning Act and the Green Energy and Green Economy Act, which instill many regulations, including Submarine cables have to be installed at least 20 meters from one another for ease of repair access. The turbines themselves have to be at least 550 meters away from a sound receptor. Thank you all for joining us today on our program. I now send you to Patricia, who will be talking about the environmental impacts of offshore wind farms. Wind matters. Hi, welcome to Wind Matters. This is gonna be our submarine cable for the demonstration today. We're gonna to have to use a high voltage, high capacity cable for offshore to make it more efficient and worthwhile investment. This cable is gonna be about $200 a meter, which is quite expensive and doesn't include things like physical labor or special installation devices or even offshore transformers. So as you can see, our lake environment is relatively uh, transparent in the water. But this is our cable, and in order to protect it from fishery activity and uh, anchoring from boats, we're going to have to dig about a one to four meter trench in the lake bed environment, like this. The level of turbidity in the water has increased. The lake bed environment is completely destroyed, and sediments have been disturbed. Now where are all the fish going to breed? There are quite a few species at risk in this area in particular including the channel darter, the pug nose shiner, and my favorite, the rainbow mussel. This doesn't include things like turtles or snakes that are also at risk in the area. So, if you're gonna do offshore, you better be there while I show you what it. <laughs> See you later. This was Wind Matters.